where where are you sitting or thinking about all the AI stuff that's going on right now? Let's see. I made a video about it, you know, saying it's like not to worry about it because it's soulless. The more I've used it, the more I feel empty when I get a piece of art from AI. It mm -hmm. just it doesn't feel like it has any. Well, it, there's you know, there's no person behind it. And yeah. so it doesn't it doesn't connect with me, and it always it, it can do really good at making things feel creepy, because <laughs> because soulless things are creepy. <laughs> um, and so in that way, it's like I I can use it for like ideas for making something that's kind of in the creepy world or weird supernatural things, but as far as just like straight up using it to create anything besides ideas it's hard for me to want to do that myself. Now I can see how other people would want to do that and make a bunch of money and they have. And I, I can see the argument of like, I, how artists need to give permission to, to use and deconstruct and, and study their artwork. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's a good idea. Like, yeah. like, can we have a website where it says, submit your artwork if you, if you really want it to be used and we'll give you a percentage of revenue we're making from it, you know, if it's used. Um, that's interesting. Um, cop the copyright issues are, can, are, I don't know qu quite where I stand with it. It would be sad if one day, you know, someone's like, um, here's my graphic novel done in Jason Brubaker's style. Right. But, but <laughs> at the same time, it would make my stuff more valuable. Right. I could sell originals as an authentic Jason Brubaker, not a, not an imitation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then my graphic novels, if they're real, if my art really becomes the source material for everybody else's inspiration art, then that says I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so there's that side of it. Um, and I, I do like the idea of <clears throat> me being able to load my own art, all of the art I've ever done that mm -hmm. I like into a catalog that's my own. And then I can have AI generate stuff for me as background characters and whatever. Yeah. You know, that's what I think is exciting, but it would be my stuff that I'm working with. Yeah. You know, same as like me tracing over my work. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's all my work, so I don't care. Um, but I think the, the, the true thing that I love about art is like seeing an artist's interpretation of something, seeing their um, storytelling and world building. And, you know, it's all coming out of this guy's head. And that's what's fascinating. And that's what I've always fallen in love with, with art. And yeah. so... So to, to see something that's AI generated, it's like, yeah, it's, it's neat technology, but, um, but I don't care about it because it's not attached to a person, you know? Yeah. And so, and I know for the masses, they don't think about that stuff, but, but I think there is some underlying feeling that's, that, that does come across with art. And when a creator creates something, there, there's something about it that's unexplainable that's, that, a feeling associated with it, you know, the passion that was put into it that comes across. And I don't think you can imitate that. I think what's, what's fascinating is like, you know, it's, it's moving so quickly. I think yeah. that the, the place where I do feel like I want to encourage creatives in general to just be thinking is like, it's very easy to kind of stick our heads in the sand when this kind of stuff is going on. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we not, um, yeah. yeah what, how do you suggest? What do you, What are your concerns, and what do you suggest to so, be paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, so number one, I think you've got to play with it. You got to see what it can do. You've got to use it yourself. Like, you know, don't just fall on the bandwagon or or the train of thought, which is like, this is all bad. Therefore, I will not touch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I think you have to kick the tires and see what it can do and see if there is a yeah. use for it in your own creative process. You know, I've actually, I, you know, I, because I, I have I am I am an early adopter. Like I will I am someone that wants to like kind of see what's going on and try everything and see what it yeah. can do and how we can use it. I also am very much on the side of the fence of what you just said, which is there's, you know, as of yet, you know, I think it's, you know, if, if you are discerning in a certain way, mostly I feel like you can recognize what's been AI generated at this point. Um, but I also think it's moving so quickly that, you know, two years from now, like we can't even imagine what this stuff is going to be capable yeah. of. And I think that's, and because of that, because it is moving so fast, that's also why I think it's so important for us as creatives to just kind of understand 
where is it going? What is it doing? How do we navigate this world, which I think is unquestionably going to be really disruptive? Um, and so I think, you know, where where I think the big opportunity for artists and creatives is, is, you know, number one, for better or worse, and, you know, this is this is controversial and people will hate that, but I think the genie is out of the bottle. So fighting it doesn't feel like the right move to me. Mm -hmm. What what it feels like the place to go is how do I become someone where my ideas and my execution and my ability to create something that AI can't do is mm -hmm. really interesting and valuable. Yeah. So I, you know, because what AI is, I think where the, the people I feel the worst for are production artists. Like, yeah, I think, yeah. That, it's, it's like, killed like concept. You're, 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 you're done. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but it's like you're done. Mm -hmm. So it's like so that if you're yeah. so if you're someone in that arena, then I think the the thing you get to do now is give yourself a uh, you know give yourself a promotion to art, to art director. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like you know you, if you're if you're a mid tier production artist, like I mean, hate to say it, but it's like you know this is your chance to not worry about trying to do you know low to mid mid-level production art but instead like get really good at you know how do i communicate visual ideas mm -hmm. using tools and then be able to work with other collaborators to then do the original stuff that comes from that yeah uh, so I, I think those are things to kind of be thinking about and you know same thing that what i've been fascinated by on the writing side is playing a lot with chat GPT and open AI and, you know, some of the writing tools, I think it's actually phenomenal from a script writer perspective or from a storyteller perspective to throw your ideas into chat GPT and ask it to give you a story mm -hmm. and almost without fail. It tells you what not to do. Oh, really? <laughs> because it'll come up with a compelling story, but mm -hmm. it's all tropes. Yeah. Okay. I can at, see that. At the surface level, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. That's kind of cool. And then yeah. you're like, wait a second. Like I've heard this a million times. Yeah. So it's a great way to go like, oh man, like, you know, that, and, and half the time, you know, I'll, I'll admit like, it's like, oh, I was kind of thinking that. Well, I don't need to think beyond that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I think, you know, that's the thing that I think gets really interesting is that both on the art side and the writing side, you know, the AI can do an incredible job of remixing. Yeah. What it can't do is make a truly original jump, yeah. at least at this point. It can so, be very, it's it's very successful at being technical yeah. and no, knowing everything, but yeah. it, it can't be creative, like really, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not coming up with an idea it, and from a life experience. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. You know, that's it. I never heard that said that way, but that's like, actually, that's critically, I think that's a critical point of view that it's like, you know, we, mm -hmm. we make art, we tell stories based on personal experience and that's what mm -hmm. creates, you know, yeah. that's what that makes the most compelling work is it's something yeah. that has a, hum a human, you know, voice and tone and connection to it. And exactly. And, yeah. And that's what we don't have. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, think I think that'll always win out the voice and the connection, the, you know, I mean, like that's yeah. what it was exploring, and that, and I don't know if you ever read Bakuman. I don't know if anybody can see this, but anyway, it's this right here. So yeah. this is a very, um, very, very, uh, a very good read when it comes down to making manga. Um, it's like everything that you ever wanted to know about making manga, it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking about it earlier about there seemed to be something in there that they were it was it was kind of bringing up the AI thing. Mm. where this arc happens where this this rich kid builds a, a a company and just has a bunch of people that come in there and they all talk about manga and they mm. all write into this they all write that when they're all reading all the time and they they have these computers where they they type in all their ideas into this forum and so the guy who's drawing the manga he takes all the best ideas and puts it into the manga now at first it's like it could it, it was like bringing it was it was creating a, a an awesome first chapter or something right yeah. and then it was like everything was in there somehow it was like they were like oh my god this is amazing and then you see how does it fail or succeed you know what i mean is it going to what what you what will win out what will actually what's the conclusion of, were they fair also to this i believe it's a very very fair uh, assessment of it 
Mm -hmm. um, and there was there is something like you can find the good in it, right? And then you can find the bad in it. So there's always going to be something. It's like that comes up throughout history where somebody was going to run with an idea like the hero's journey. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Star Wars, the heroes, everybody. Now it's like all these executive, all these producers, executive producers are trying to find everything with the hero's journey in it. Now it's like, yeah. oh, look how successful Star Wars was where it's, there's only seven uh, storylines. There's only 11 storylines. It's like, it's like overall, it's like, no, none of that's true. There could be, it's, there's an infinite amount of stories. There's an, you know what I mean? Anyways, but, yeah. I know what they mean when they say these kinds of things, when they come up with these rules or they come up with these these things. But so then they start creating software like to write scripts and it all has all these things in there are all ready for you to go to start mm -hmm. writing the script. So there's there's always that stuff that's involved. There's always that stuff coming up. But I'm not surprised, you know, that something <laughs> like this came up. Like I said, when that story from Bakuman, that's exactly the same it's like almost exactly the same things that people do all the time when they try to cut corners or they try to you know i'm making cut i mean maybe cutting corners is you know again it's another kind of criticism of it like what people are doing but there's like you were saying that there's like both of you guys were talking about it uh that there's the, the benefits of it or the good sides of it or whatever you know when i worked in movies you know there was there's the guy at the top who's the art director and the production designer they're they're looking at reference all over the world and trying to figure out what would be the best for this theme for this movie and and de deciding what's not good and good and then they're using their art artistic ability to put it together and then they're they're guiding other artists to to do like fill in the gaps but but follow their formula and what they've figured out and that's what i think all artists should inspire to be is is the 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 actual artist who's thinking outside the box, who's creating and putting things together, you can always find technology or people to, to be a cog in the wheel, so to speak. Um, but you can't, I don't think you can ever truly replace an artist making decisions and trying to put all these pieces together and deciding what the style will be for this project and, and how to convey this emotion, you know, um, people, Jason, it's about people. It's about okay. people, and yeah, we can we can all find ourselves in replaceable careers. I think, but I don't think anyone should have those replaceable careers be their um, their goal in life. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anyone grows up and says, "I really want to be a cog in the wheel." You know, I mean, maybe maybe someone does because they don't want to think about making decisions. <laughs> yeah, people do it all the time. Well, yeah. I don't think you grow up wanting to be a cog in the wheel. You may not realize that there are other options. I think people find yeah. being but, a cog in the wheel. But even like, you know, say I was at, at DreamWorks, like I was un, I was still under other people that were better than me that, who were making the decisions. And I was trying to just imitate what they what they thought was the best idea for Kung Fu Panda or whatever. Mm -hmm. and And I was learning from it. Like I wasn't in the position to where I could have taken their job because they're so much more skilled and advanced and better at color theory and, and all this stuff, you know? And so that's what I was always, you know, had my sights on or being the director or the art director. It, it wasn't ever about, I just want to get this job where I continually just do the same thing over and over for the rest of my life doing what I'm told. And that's why I stepped out then too and, and started making my own books because I'm like, wow, I can actually, just go straight to being everything in the production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I think that's going to be a very hard thing to replace. You, you People can always um, have AI write stories and stuff, but I think it'll always be a gimmick if, if people know it's AI. I, I'm sure there's going to be some yeah. AI productions where people are like, Oh, by the way, this was AI written. Right. And everyone was going to be like, what? No way. But there's always going to be some human factor in there making decisions of if that's a good story or not. Yeah. And what should we tweak out of the, what the AI gave us, yeah. you know? Well, that's, and that's why I think, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. I think it's, it's the production parts of not just art, but animation and filmmaking. And yeah. you know, it's the fill in the, it's the fill in the gaps parts that are in the most danger of, you know, kind of yeah. being minimized, yeah. replaced. But the problem is every artist has to do those fill in the gap jobs yes. in order yes. to become better, That's right. and, you know, in order to make those decisions. So I think it'll be hard to completely replace those jobs because artists need that, you know, in order to actually get 
to where you can make decisions. You you just have to do that stuff, you know. Yeah. That's not wrong either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's just fascinating. I think you know the biggest thing for me is I just I watch people having reactions to yeah stuff. the fear. And yeah. the fear. And, and in talking even to like one of, you know, one of the illustrators that we work with a lot is you know, also doing a macroverse series and, and that is, you know, kind of similar conversation with him. And he was very much like, yeah, I recognize the fact that like, I'm just scared. It took me 20 years to get as good as I am. And yeah. you know, here's people <laughs> like spitting stuff out that they think is just as good in, you know, two minutes. Um, yeah. And it's like, yeah, I totally, <laughs> totally recognize that. Yeah. I just, I, you know, my worry is that, you know, the, the reaction to, you know, not, not, I mean, of course there are things we should fight against, but the, the reaction to try to stop something that I think is almost unstoppable, you know, yeah. pessimistic about that, but it's like, you know, unless yeah, we have a way to you know, completely take down Google and Facebook, and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, like a it's resistance. like, it's like, Artist. a we have to kind of be willing to go like, okay, the world is changing. And like, you know, we're going through these big technology shifts and, you know, anytime that happens, you know, things get shuffled around and it's just, yeah. it's just happening so fast that I think it's hard for a lot of people, including, yeah. you, know, to, you know, kind of wrap our heads around. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's going to happen pretty quick and then it'll just, it'll like, it'll just taper it'll, off again to something else, you know, it'll just it'll be just, different, completely different. Know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like I'm using a computer, you know, to draw this stuff. Like yeah. computers just changed everything and made all artists throw their whole careers into question. And yeah, you know, um, do I need to learn 3d animation now? Yeah. You know, well, Photoshop, I mean, it's funny. You can go back and find articles when Photoshop came out that almost read exactly the same as some of the, I some of the AR, AI articles. Um, you know, yeah. this, is, this is the end of art. Um, so it is, you know, it is interesting. I just, I, you know, again, I just think it's something to, I think you just, it, it's worth taking the time, even if you end up completely hating it and trying to destroy it. And, you know, we can all be fighting Skynet together, e even if yeah. that's where we end up. It's like, I just think it's really worth taking the time to try to understand it, to try to yeah. see, what to do, see if there is a place for it in your creative process. And, and I'll, I will say for me, I started to talk about this Macronauts, you know, project that we're working on. And what's funny about that is like, I've been, this is something I've been kind of doodling on and thinking about for, you know, a couple of years. It's based on concepts that have been rolling around in my brain all the way back to college. And I could never quite crack what I thought the style of it should be visually. And like, you know, mm -hmm. my, my process was always like, go yeah, I've, I've, I've done a ton of, you know, swipe over the years, meaning like go look online and find stuff and make clipping files and boards. And, you know, like, you know, that's that's part of a lot of pitching things and all that is, you know, here's visual reference of stuff that this might kind of feel like or look like. Um, and I could never quite find it. And in, you know, an hour playing with Mid Journey, it's like I now know exactly what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. And so it's like, that's an area where it's like, I don't want to use mid journey to create the art. Like I'm going to create the art, but yeah. it was like a real breakthrough moment of like, holy crap. Now I know what this is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I even did that a little bit for call me hallow because I, you know, I subscribed to mid journey for a couple months yeah. there. Um, and there are some, some things with this comic where I'm just like, I just don't have an idea for it. I am yeah. not sure what visually to even go towards until I see something. So I typed in some, some things for, to, to come up with concept ideas and, and it gave me some good ideas. And now it's, it definitely has steered me in a direction that I wouldn't have gone that I, I don't know how fast it would have taken me to get to that yeah. on my own, Yeah, you know, but it's, it's influenced it. You know, it, it's more like just being able to have access to all of Google yeah. imagery on a subject, yeah. you know, like, as an artist instead of having that do your work for you you know yeah exactly. if i had a production company and i was doing animation and there's programs that could render background animation characters to match the animation styles of of the production mm -hmm. like that would just be a no-brainer to do it you totally. know well and i think that's a i think that's a inevitability within the next you know year or two yeah. i'm i'm expecting probably within the next year we're going to have 
you know, AI driven in between. Yeah, which it would be amazing. It's amazing. Like, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, you know, I, it's it's been around already for yeah. a long time, 10 years. Like, I remember um, using After Effects to do in-betweens. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it was really helpful to just speed up the pro production. And you can make it look like cell animation. And, like, we we're experimenting with ways to do it. Like, it's just the same thing, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway. I can see people's arguments, though, that you're, if you're ripping off an artist or if yeah. the AI is, I can yeah. I get that. But I think it's different if you're saying, here's, you know, if you're inputting your own stuff, like it's even in Photoshop, you can expand your canvas and have AI like draw, yeah. draw out. And it's yeah. like, why wouldn't I want to do that? That exists right yeah. now. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, you can, you know. The, the next thing on my AI checklist, as far as like understanding the tools, like there is a way to do that with stable diffusion where you can, you know, input your own images and then create stuff based on that. It's, it's oh, okay. uh, from what I've seen, it's not as advanced as go like, Hey, you know, now draw my comic for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's interesting for like going like, you know, what, what, what kind of concepts could we get from my own library of, of stuff? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Yeah, I really like that. Like, I want I want to make a Jason Brubaker AI art style. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's the part of the answer for you know the the feeling that it's taking advantage in some ways is like that potentially becomes a sellable product. It's like yeah, here's the have your own AI yeah. art. Here's the based on your stuff. Here's the Jason library. Here's the Anthony. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know about selling that, but. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it it might be the thing that actually makes artists really famous. Mm -hmm. you, you just if if their art becomes more accessible because everyone's falling in love with AI versions of their art. Yeah, you know, and then people will actually seek out the artist that the name is used in the in the. Uh, whatever whatever it's well, called like you know again like looking looking through the the historical comic lens you know i i am firmly in this camp but it's like you know i i would say art adams is the ai of <laughs> of the uh <laughs> of the 80s and 90s where it's like you know just about every mm -hmm. image founder and you know a whole generation of comic artists are some derivative of art atoms that you know some of which found their own voice yeah some of which didn't <laughs> yeah that's that's true art is just imitating other things whether it's life or another artist or in that steal like an artist book they talked about that there was a whole chapter about like how imitation is not flattery like you're not trying to kind of like just you don't want to be a plagiarizer. What you're trying to do is you borrow, like you're just, you, you like, this is all your favorite things. Like you find, you find all your favorite things and then you maybe figure out what, like, um, like they made a sequel and then, you know, you couldn't wait for it to come out and then it sucked. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, so like, why wasn't it like, what, what were they missing? Like, you know, like find all the stuff that they were missing, even in the greatest stuff, what, what could they have done better? Your mind is always going to jumping to things. That they that they missed or they could have done better mm -hmm. um but you you generally you figure out what they did but you're taking apart the engine and you're putting it back together you're just seeing how it works and now you go off and do your thing here here i've given you everything that you needed to get started i hear have all this this is what i've allowed you to sh I've, I've allowed you to see everything here all the movies all the books i wrote everything that i've done here now go do your thing so now it's like you're going to make your own thing based off of all this stuff or whatever that you were given or, you know, just like it's just like that. Yeah. The AI just sort of, you know, I don't know, just still thinking about it. Just listening. Yeah. Well, we none of us know at the moment. It's just, <laughs> it's just yeah. a fascinating thing. <laughs> and you're right. It is changing so fast. I mean, it's like, yeah. ugh, how, how can you even predict like two years from now? Yeah, I think, I think we can. That's that's part of what makes it scary. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. And thanks for coming on, Anthony and Evan. See you guys.